Welcome everybody to the November 16, 2016 uh, meeting of the Scarborough Town Council. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, last Friday was Veterans Day. Uh, as we stand to say the Pledge of Allegiance, let's do it in honor of all of our veterans. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Councilor Baybine? Present. Councilor Rowan? Here. Councilor Caterina? Here. Councilor St. Clair? Here. Councilor Hayes? Here. Councilor Piazzo? Here. Chairman Dunvin? Here. Uh, general public comments. Anyone wishing to uh, speak to the council on any issue that's not on the agenda, please feel free to go to the podium, <laughs> announce yourself and your address, and you have three minutes. Hi, March DeSanctis, 54 Beechridge Road. Um, I read the 2015 annual report that was published um, that we got around election time, which I wanted to thank whoever put it together. It was very nice, and since I'm in finance, I, I love reading balance sheets and statements <laughs> of position. Um, but I did have one question about the um, delinquent taxes that went back into the 90s. And I wondered what the policy is on collecting those old taxes because it added up to quite a penny. I mean, we were getting close to a million dollars. So um, I, I don't know what the policy is on those really old ones in the 90s. And, you know, just that was my question, realizing there were so many. Thank you. Tom Manager, report you want to answer that? Good. And uh, we'll ask the town manager to take that up in the town manager's report uh, later in the evening. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to? address the council. Hi, uh, Katie Foley, Three Lucky Lane, Scarborough. Uh, I just thought of this and I should have had it prepared. Um, the Scarborough Kindness Project, if you haven't liked our, uh, the Facebook page, is holding a civility workshop on the 29th. Uh, and we have some professional facilitators coming in to kind of help everybody learn how to uh, kind of talk about um, anything they need to talk about in a civil fashion. So um, there's more details on our Facebook page, and that'd be great. We'd love to see lots of people in the community come out. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address the council? Thank you. Close uh, general public comments. Minutes of November 2nd, 2016, regular meeting. May I have a motion? Approve approval. Second. Discussion? Comments? Corrections? Any? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Uh, adjustments to the agenda? I know of none at this time. Uh, items to sign are the treasurer's warrants, which I will do later in the evening. Uh, order number 16-67, the 7 p.m. public hearing and second reading on the proposed amendments to the Town of Scarborough official zoning map to rezone property located at 79 Muzzy uh, Road from B3, a business uh, zone, and VR2, uh, the village residential zone, to TVC3, Town and Village Center. I will ask the town manager to introduce this item. Uh, Dan Bacon, town planner, is here, and I would respectfully defer to him. He's Very good. More. Thank you, Dan. Password yet, Tom. <laughs> uh, thank you. Sorry for the delay. Uh, Dan Bacon, Town Planner. Uh, this item you heard at first reading, I think in October, and this is a zoning map amendment as introduced. Um, there's a property located on Muzzy Road, 70, 79 Muzzy Road, roughly halfway between the Spring Street intersection and the intersection with Gallery Boulevard that happens to have three different zoning districts apply to that one property. Um, as introduced, there's a, there's a B3 zone, which is a commercial zone that applies. There's a, a village residential zone on the back portion of the property that applies. And then there's the TVC3 district that applies towards Spring Street, which is a mixed use zone, meaning it allows some light commercial as well as some residential uses. Um, and Risbear Brothers approached uh, our department, the Long Range Planning Committee, 
um, earlier this year in September. Um, they have it under contract and they're interested in doing okay. um, some multifamily development on the parcel that fits nicely under the TVC3 district allowances in that mixed use zone. And um, given this, uh, they're seeking a, a zoning change to consolidate those three zones into the TVC3 district. Um, and this went to the Long Range Planning Committee in September. They reviewed it. Uh, they determined that, uh, in their opinion, it was consistent with the comprehensive plan that recommends this area be a neighborhood center uh, with a mix of uses, both residential and commercial. And the TVC3 district was established back in 2007-2008 to implement the comprehensive plan uh, in this area uh, in that way. Uh, since that time, you had first reading, um, and then subsequent to that, the planning board had their uh, public hearing on this matter on November 7th. They reviewed it, and they uh, provided a favorable opinion on the, the zoning change. So that's sort of the big picture on the change. Um, I'm here to answer questions. I know Rocky Rosbera is here and can answer, answer more detailed questions. Should you have any on, you know, the details of the project and, and so on? So. And we, we, just for the benefit of the audience uh, uh, watching uh, uh, on television, can you identify which of the lots are which uh, in the, th the three different zoning districts sure. that are now being consolidated into one? There's a better map, so <laughs> different colors, but bigger. Um, so to that, to that point, this is Muzzy Road here, and these uh, three different um, different colors and different um, shapes are the three different zones. So the parcel is all one parcel, and it's broken up by these three different zoning districts. Um, this is the red is, is illustrating the B3, a commercial zone, and that rest of that B3 zone goes towards South Portland across from Gallery Boulevard. That's envisioned to be a commercial area. This um, bluish green is the TVC3 district that's proposed to include the entire parcel uh, should this map change go into effect. And this back um, area further off of Muzzy Road is the Village Residential 2 zone, um, which continues on to, to the parcel that's behind it. Um, and the TVC3 zone continues um, the other direction to the Eight Corners area. It includes the church at Eight Corners, the uh, Pete's, the, the pizza place, uh, a variety of those small businesses and residential um, properties at Eight Corners. For orientation purposes, uh, as you head down Muzzy Road, uh, it, uh, it's a B3 district that would be changed to a TVC district for the red. Correct. Uh, what? So the, the, the abutters who are most affected by this, yep. uh, who are the abutters to, uh, as you head down Muzzy Road, immediately adjacent to uh, the red portion of the lot? There's a um, property here that has a house on it, but it also has a small business in that house, given it's a commercial zone. And the property next to that is a multi-unit office building, um, the red office building right across the street from Gallery Boulevard. And uh, beyond that, there's... Um, motorcycle shop. Yeah. Motorcycle, motorcycle shop. shop. Yeah. And beyond that, um, there's actually an open piece of land. How about for the yellow? The yellow here, this is Honan, Honan Road. And it's a short, dead-end road, uh, residential neighborhood. And so the properties here along Honan Road are uh, single-family houses. There's probably a, you know, eight to 12 single-family houses on Honan Road. Um, across the street is the Siemens office building, um, also Creative Imaging office building. Um, it's across the street. A pretty mixed use in the, in the neighborhood. Correct. Okay. Good. Uh, questions of Dan? Start down the end, and we'll move this. Yeah. Up. So first, I want to apologize, Dan, because I wasn't here for the, the first reading, and when you presented, so I apologize because I was out of town. Um, what has been the input from the residents on yeah. Honan Road, and uh, what is their feedback regarding the change? Mm -hmm. I'm going to defer to Mr. Rosbera because he yeah. conducted the neighborhood meeting. Sure, I'd be happy to answer that. Uh, Rocky Rosbera, 
Um, we met with the neighbors. We had a neighborhood meeting right at the church uh, on October 5th. Uh, we sent out 35 uh, invitations, registered mail, and uh, actually got 22 people to come to the meeting. It was a really good, uh, constructive, positive meeting. No one had any issue with our proposal to change the zone to all one TVC free zone. So we've had good feedback. Thank you. Uh, the questions of uh, Dan or Rocky? Peter. Yeah, I think, I mean, this is a question that came for a, from a constituent today, to all of us, I think. And the question was, and we talked about this last time, we thought based on what you planned to build that there'd be very little impact on school-age children. I think you mentioned maybe a, a child or two. And, and, and the constituent was just wondering what was that based on? Are we comfortable that that's a, a pretty accurate prediction? Just wanted a little bit more information about how we made that sort of assessment. Sure. Um, I can answer that. I'm just flip my page here and I can give you some detailed information. Um, the units that we're proposing are virtually identical to units that we have built uh, in Westbrook. And uh, what they are is they're 12 unit buildings with a mix of one and two bedroom units, 50-50. Uh, so the units themselves don't lend themselves uh, to, to be really family type housing. And uh, so in doing the project in Westbrook, we hired planning decisions to do a study for us, and they did a very detailed study. And uh, of the 146 units that we're building there, they predicted that we would have two school-aged children. Um, at this point in time, we're not fully built out in Westbrook. Uh, we have 102 of the 146 units complete and committed, and we have two school-aged children so far. <laughs> so if the trend continues, we think we might get to three on the 146. So. Um, we feel pretty confident that, you know, maybe a couple of school-aged children would, would live here, uh, but it really shouldn't have a huge impact on the, on the school system. Right. Are the size of the units and the rental pricing of the units similar to what's proposed here? Very similar, yes. Uh, size of the units exactly the same and pricing virtually the same. Good. Okay. Just to, if I could, I, I've asked Dan, and he's done, started to do some uh, national and statewide research on multifamily and sure. what trends are, could be expected. So if it... If you'd permit him, I, it might be helpful just to kind of put it in a larger pr uh, perspective beyond sure. uh, Rocky's experience. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, and the Long Range Planning Committee has also been talking about sort of these implications, so that's part of the research. Um, in the state of Maine, we actually, uh, based on statistics, I think we have the lowest percentage. Maybe Wyoming has the lowest. We might be the second lowest percentage <laughs> of multifamily housing as a state. Um, at 6% of the population lives in multifamily. Um, breaking that down, about in the state of Maine, 4% of those that live in multifamily housing are married couples with children, and then 8% are single parents. So that's all multifamily housing in, mm -hmm. in the state of Maine. So that's not necessarily just one and two bedroom. That could be you know, one to four or five bedroom. Four bedroom might be the max, but um, so I think you can kind of take those percentages and then make it a little bit more conservative. It's not as low as Rocky indicated, but I think that's in part the style of unit that he's doing in Westbrook and, and here. Um, and I would say there's one other key piece to, to keep in mind is the town, even if Rocky's predictions are off by some percentage, um, the town has school impact fees in place, mm -hmm. and um, they are less per unit than single family impact fees because of statistics strongly suggest that there's a lot less um, school impact. But that being said, it's um, a little bit over, it's about $1,100 per unit that a developer has to pay for a multifamily uh, unit towards the school impact fee ordinance. So should this project move ahead, I've estimated it to be about $80,000 that the project would pay towards the school impact fee um, for the number of units that they have. Um, so that, you know, should there be four or five, six school children, whatever the, it works out to be, you know, there is a fair amount of income to help compensate for the school impact. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, I missed the first number. <clears throat> Did you say 40% married with children or 4%? Four. 4%. Four. Four mm. Sorry if that wasn't clear. 
I think it was me. Other questions? Of Chris? So, Dan, with the uh, with the multi-unit, uh, do yeah. duplexes count as multi-unit, or is that a separate category? It's a separate category. Okay. So this is three or three more units, units, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. Other questions of Dan or Rocky? Thank you. Public, anyone uh, here this evening who would like to address this uh, matter, please approach the podium. Yes, you certainly may. Ben Howard, Seven Windsor Pines. Uh, I'd just like to know what the uh, target um, audience is for uh, who we're trying to, I guess, get to move into the area. Um, I, it sounds to me we're not looking, it's not for families. I, I kind of want to hear a little bit more on what the target uh, buyer would be. Thank you. Dan, you want to take a shot at that, or Rocky? Yeah. <laughs> 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 the demographic. <laughs> Frankly, our, our target audience is, is anyone that meets our criteria and can pay the rent. Um, and we do have some pretty strict criteria, uh, I'll mention. But uh, uh, what we found so far with our, with our units uh, there in Westbrook is that we, we really range in a wide age uh, from 20 on up to the 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, but the biggest demographic is, is people in their 20s to 30s seem to be mm -hmm. occupying. That's the largest uh, piece. We do have a fair amount of retired people as well. But that, that really seems to be you know, where, where the market is at, and, and there seems to be plenty of demand for the style unit. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would just mention that um, we know so far in our, um, you know, in our 146 units, again, 102 committed in Westbrook, uh, the average number of occupants is 1.75 mm. people per unit. And um, of the 102 units that are committed, we have seven units that have three occupants. So we have a lot of units that just have one occupant, uh, and, that, and you would think it would be with the one-bedroom units. And we also know that um, our vehicle parking average is about 1.54 mm -hmm. vehicles per unit. So there's, it's, there's just not a lot of people in these, these units. Mm. Oh, Rocky, the given question. the size and the pricing, is is this uh, properly characterized as workforce housing? I, I would say it would. It, it was. Um, it it it, um, it probably wouldn't be something that you would call affordable, although we're not very far off. Uh, we're uh, we're a little under at 100 percent of median in Portland. We're a little under that market uh, at 80 percent, which I think you would probably think of a little more affordable. We're just about $100 a unit over what that number would be, so we're, we're real close. Uh, so that, workforce that, housing that's is... helpful information. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Kate, then... Uh, go, go, me first? Or yes, go me? right ahead. Okay. Um, I, for me, it's, you know, one of the biggest issues I think that we've had is we don't have housing for the people that work in this town. Um, you know, our teachers, our police officers, our firefighters, um, people that work for the town themselves. And so I think um, this is going to also, again, fit a need that we desperately have in this town. Um, you know, we talk, we talk a lot about affordable housing, um, but that's a, that's a tricky term. And it's not, you say affordable housing, but it, that's, it's, that term, and then you give the, the explanation for affordable housing, and it's, it's, it doesn't always add up. Um, the state can be very tricky with how we do um, affordable housing. So keep in mind, like the chair said, this, what these guys are trying to accomplish is more housing for the people that live in our town. We want people to stay here. Um, we don't want them to go anywhere. And that area where this is is a very up-and-coming area. Um, and I also, I think I pointed this out last time, too. I got it. Um, yep, I got it. Rocky, you guys always do such a great job, and I just am always impressed every time you come here with a presentation, and um, I always have the utmost faith that what you say you do and what you build you do, and it's always top-notch, so I appreciate that. Thank that's you That's not much. always the case, <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. Right, Jean Marie. Um, just out of curiosity, what, what is the range of monthly uh, fee you're looking to charge at this uh, point. What's your market rate looking like? Twelve fifty to fourteen fifty. Heat and hot water. Heat and hot water included. Okay. 
Um, and a follow-up, if yeah. I may. Um, and this is just to the council, um, since I won't be here after tonight, but just something to think about is when you do develop projects like this, um, is I know that with the Eastern Village and Dunstan Crossing, we had some set, set asides for affordable housing, some fees or requirements, whatever. And I, I you know, I would like to see that uh, um, looked at um, because we have a strong need for affordable housing. Twelve fifty a month is not exactly affordable housing for a lot of people and my my particular thing of course is senior housing affordable um and decent housing for seniors so anyway that's my two cents worth sean and will yeah um so just a question um what, what's the expected build out until full occupancy uh i would estimate about a year really that quickly a little maybe a little over okay. uh, once we get going we're turning about a build in a month mm -hmm. so and we so far we've Every time a building comes online, we get certificate of occupancies. We have 12 people move in. So uh, as long mm -hmm. as that market holds, which we really and feel that's it will. And all phases, all buildings is about a year? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Well, uh, so uh, one question and then a, then a comment. Um, the, um, so then pretty low vacancy rate, like these things are just, they're full. Oh, they're yeah. Full. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then uh, just a, a clarification to uh, Councillor Katarina, if I could. Yeah. Uh, so the the Dunson Crossing and Eastern Village had density bonus right uh, to to get the affordable. So that that is an option in the TDC zone. I, I believe okay. <coughs> it wasn't elected here. But right. the, thank okay. you. Thanks. Uh, other questions for Rocky? Thank you, Rocky. Thank you. Uh, other uh, comments are from the public. Hi, Marge to Sanctus, 54 Beechridge Road. I'm the, the chair of the Scarborough Housing Alliance, and I'll have Will back me up on, on this, but um, what we've deemed to be affordable housing, which we're using also as the term workforce housing, as interchangeable, is 80% of the um, Port, greater Portland. AMI. AMI, there you go. Okay. Very median income. Okay. So, so if these are at 100, they, they wouldn't come into that right. affordable range. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Rizveri, one more comment, please. I could add just a little bit of information uh, if, the, if the council cares to hear it. Um, I did take a look at the chart and uh, basically at 80% of median, a uh, one bedroom, uh, including heat and hot water, would be, the rent would be 1100 uh, Again, we're at 1250 On a two bedroom, the rent would be 1333 and we're at 14 to uh, 1450 mm -hmm. So. We're not quite there at, at 80%, but we're not real far off. At, at 100, it's uh, one bedroom is 1390, and uh, two bedrooms is 1665. So we're under under 100, but a little above the the 80. Thank you. Thank you. Other comments from the public? Wow. Great. Uh, ben Howard, Seven Windsor Pines. Uh, uh, Mr. Howard, if you uh, yeah. has anyone else who hasn't spoken yet had an opportunity? Thank you. Go right ahead. Um, I understand that you have a wealth of statistics. Um, I, I don't remember what company you used or anything. I was just wondering if you could um, give us some more data on what's the likelihood that uh, this development in, in Scarborough will fill up as fast as Westbrook. Um, I'm not quite sure what the similarities are between the two different areas. Um, for this place, you know, I drive by it. Uh, I, d I don't know, as a, as a younger um, member of the community and the workforce, I don't know if I really want to live in that area. Um, it's, it's um, I don't know, it, it just doesn't scream to me that I want to move in. Um, Westbrook tends to be closer to Portland. Uber rides are cheaper, so I was just wondering if you had that same um, uh, uh, data collecting community do a uh, study on the particular area that this is proposed for. Thank you. Uh, Rocky, you want to take a shot at that? Sure. Um, we actually did not have uh, a study done uh, on on that, uh, you know, to see what the need was. We were, were relying on some studies that have been done by HUD uh, that show the need in the greater Portland area of, of a couple thousand units. And we know right now, you know, around 500 have been built. Uh, so we feel very confident. Um, I don't want to say that we're we're betting a lot of money 
on these projects, but we're betting a lot of money on the fact that we're, we're going to be right. Uh, we feel very <laughs> confident uh, in that. Uh, my brothers and I are involved in a couple of projects, the Westbrook project being one. We have a project in South Portland mm -hmm. that's very similar. It's under construction, and uh, we'd, we'd love to have this one uh, be available to us, and, and we feel like we're, we're a little bit ahead of the curve in, in being able to get these up and built, and uh, the market seems to be there, and it, it really, all the studies have shown that, that the market is going to continue to be yeah. there. So we're very, very confident in that. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Public, uh, uh, any further comments? Close public comment. Uh, appreciate a motion. Move so approval. Moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Uh, discussion? Chris. Um, so uh, first of all, uh, this is the third or fourth opportunity we've had to collect right. public input. So having received none personally, I assume that everybody's okay with this, so I am as well. Um, my initial responses before remain the same. It's location, location, location. However, um, I do trust the planning board to do the appropriate setbacks and the appropriate mitigation, as well as the appropriate buffering to the existing neighborhood. I have faith in that process. Uh, I think they'll do a good job, and I have no reason to m not support this motion. Good other comments? Uh, excuse me, Sean. Then we'll, then we'll, then we'll. The jokes I could have with that uh, <laughs> reference to Chris, but you know, that's, um, that's, I agree with Councilor Chiazzo. I have not received any information to suggest that this isn't in the best interest of the community. In fact, I think that um, given the presentation, that this is um, the change is very consistent with where the community is moving towards. I agree that it's location, and this location is perfect uh, given its proximity to the, you know, the main mall. Um, and other areas and even access to other public uh, services such as uh, uh, public transit. Um, the one piece I did want to mention is that um, just being a banker is that um, I can tell you that with the financing for this type of project, although I don't know anything about financing with this project, but generally speaking, they're not going to build 10 units and then hope tenants come in. They're going right. to build one unit, get tenants to come in and make sure that they have it full, then they're going to build another unit make sure they have the tenants come in so it's not like they're going to build all out and then all of a sudden we have empty buildings. Right. So they're going to meet the demand based upon what the response is as they build. So I'm very comfortable with how this is moving forward. Oh, I, I also support it. Uh, I think if you look at the map, it's, it's, it's pretty far away from the, from the river there. Um, so, but I take your point. Um, I also would say that, it's, that it is a great location. I think really easy access to the highway. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon, Scarborough. Jim Ray. Um, having been on Long Range Planning Committee, who thoroughly vetted this um, and asked a lot of uh, really good questions, uh, and being a real estate broker myself, uh, there is an immense shortage of, of rental housing uh, in this area, and it's going to take a couple of years or more to build it out um, based on the figures I've seen. So um, uh, I, I will support this. It's, it's needed. Thank you. Uh, Chris, Dan Will. Uh, just to comment on the Uber situation, I've taken him from my house, <laughs> and it's, uh, it's about $12, and it's right off the turnpike as well, so I, I, I think it's reasonable. So. <laughs> well, uh, and the other thing I wanted to say was just that, that again, that the uh, affordability, affordability factor is supply and demand, so the more yeah. supply. Right, that's true. Yeah. Other comments? Uh, I mean, uh, to me, uh, parts of this zone permit this use. Uh, other parts are contiguous. Yeah. And so my biggest concern was to make sure that the neighbors, yeah. who are now going to be neighbors to a different zone than they had been previously, are not going to be adversely affected. It seems to me, based on the information that we've gotten from the town planner, that uh, they will not, it, this will not be harmful to the neighbors. Uh, and we've had plenty of hearings to give people the opportunity to come and express their concerns. So I will support it. Any further comments by town council members? Uh, ready to vote, all in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Boy, that cleared the room. <laughs> New business, uh, Order 1672, uh, act on the request for the town council to consent to the assignment of the parking licensing agreement and a parking lease agreement to the new owners of the Higgins Beach Inn and authorize the town manager to sign any and all documents 
pertaining to this order. Uh, I'll ask the town manager to introduce this. Matt. Yes, this council may recall uh, earlier this year, I think in January, as I recall, uh, a, another prospective buyer, the Higgins Beach Inn, came forward asking for a similar request and you granted it. Uh, just by way of background, there are two different parking arrangements, one a parking lease and another parking, uh, parking license agreement that end up being uh, quite important to the Higgins Beach uh, and in its operation. It's uh, in a very thickly settled neighborhood uh, and parking is at a premium. Um, I don't have to remind this council <laughs> of that fact. Mm -hmm. uh, and so both these documents were constructed, uh, I guess, keeping in mind that this might happen. And it, uh, it, these, both of these documents can be assigned uh, to a successor, uh, but it does require consent of the, of the town. And so uh, I'm here before you, um, if it matters to the council, the, the current group that uh, is, has it on contract is the Mijus, or Mijus Hotel Group. Uh, incidentally, they, uh, they operate the Black Point Inn and also the lodge uh, up at um, Sebago Lake. So they're, they're quite capable in this industry. Good. Uh, any member of the public wishing to address the council on this issue, please approach the podium. Motion, please. So moved. Second. Discussion. Chris. Um, just curiosity, um, if I could, to the time manager through the chair. Um, wondering if we could find a way to, unless it's not the will of the council, but find a way to kind of put this in an automatic renewal situation regardless of who the owner is. Uh, so we don't have to keep addressing this every time there's a potential change of ownership, but we can revisit the agreement maybe every three years or so, regardless of who owns it, to to move it through. Or if we prefer to keep going through this every time it potentially changes. Either way, I'm just, you know. I recommend for purposes of a uh, new owner, uh, I think it's important just for a check-in to make sure that it mm. still makes sense to the, to the town. Mm. As regards, uh, if there's no change of ownership, uh, at least the parking license does renew automatically. There's termination uh, provision should we choose or they choose. Uh, for the parking lease, uh, it, is, it does have a defined term and I suggest we keep that because at some point I suspect the town may have other, other interest in that small part of the parking lot. Uh, particularly if we uh, go to an automated system to operate that uh, parking lot. The current arrangement is a quid pro quo. Uh, there's no remuneration for this, uh, for use of this, these spaces. Uh, they in turn provide uh, service to us by opening and closing the gate daily. And that certainly saves us money. We would otherwise have to have staff there, frankly, before dawn. Um, particularly fishermen are there very early in the morning and uh, certainly at dusk. Um, so uh, it it has been a very fruitful um, relationship so far. Chris? Yeah, my, and my only concern would be I, I'd hate to have to withhold sale or have them hold any up processing waiting for us to act, uh, you know, if, it's, if this is one of the conditions of sale. Um, you know, uh, that was my only concern is that they'd have to wait for us or get other approval, but I'm comfortable with it either way. We've done it twice. We haven't <coughs> fouled up any closing dates. Um, <laughs> yeah. A project of this size is a fair amount of due, due diligence, and so a couple of weeks' notice uh, well, seems reasonable. Yeah. Other comments? Well, uh, how, I'm just curious. How, how often do we reevaluate whether or not this is still the, the best use of these, these spots? I mean, if, it, if not when it comes up. But, I mean, the, especially if, to your point, the parking's at a premium there, that, that on-street parking. Like, is this still the, what we want to do with There's no automatic trigger for it to come up. Uh, you can build it in or you can advise that you want to review it on some periodic basis. John? So I um, wanted to ask that now, since we are reviewing this for this, for this transaction, one, I would hope that um, we're not reviewing it as a result of uh, sale on a frequent basis um, since, uh, <laughs> You know, hopefully we have long-term owners of the of the inn. Um, but secondarily, as to the town manager, has there been any issues reported regarding the current arrangement that we need to be concerned with, um, given the attention to parking and other behavior issues? I guess if that's what you how you on want a to personal label. basis, yes. uh, I have not received any complaints okay. for either uh, either arrangement. Thank you. No, and I haven't heard anything from Bob Westberg, uh, yeah. who I see fairly frequently. So. Uh, he's never mentioned that there was a problem in managing that space. Right. Okay, thanks. Other comments? Chris? Yeah, if I could, just to clarify, I think I heard from the town manager to Councillor Rowan's point, uh, the lease is renewed 
uh, regulates reviewed. What is, what's the every three, uh, three I years, believe it's three a, a five-year term. Five years. So regardless mm -hmm. if nothing else happens, I assume yeah. that lease will come before us anyway, uh, and that's our opportunity to kind of revisit and check in. I, I assume if that's correct. That is correct with regards to sure. the parking lease. Does it have uh, an early expiration right? It doesn't, but it does have a uh, termination provision, 90-day notice. So we're able to undo this should we so find some other interest or need. Yeah, it's a, so it's really not a five-year commitment. It's really a 90-day commitment. So no, a 90-day commitment, but a, excuse me. If you, if you choose to, to exercise your right to uh, end the relationship. Well, the my only point would be that it wouldn't come up before us as, as a matter of business until uh, the, you know, 2021. Exactly. Other, other comments? My, my experience with Higgins Beach in particular is uh, folks are very attentive to their neighborhood and what goes on. Uh, I suspect <laughs> if there are issues, <laughs> um, yeah. uh, we'll all hear it. <laughs> other questions, comments? Uh, Bob Westberg, Diane Garofalo, long time uh, mm -hmm. Operators, owners have uh, done a terrific job. Uh, they live at Higgins Beach. Uh, they still will live at Higgins Beach, so uh, they'll still be around you know, great people. Mm -hmm. And uh, it looks like they're turning it over to a, oh, yeah. an entity that uh, knows how to run inns. Yep. Yep. If anyone's been to the Black Point Inn, they know that's certainly a beautifully run operation. Great restaurant. Further comments? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. <coughs> Order 1673, uh, Act to authorize the town manager to enter into an interlocal agreement with the town of Hollis for shared vehicle maintenance and repair services. I ask the town manager to introduce this one. Yes. Um, this whole arrangement was contemplated uh, through the budget process, actually. Uh, Mike Shaw included in his budget some additional revenue for provision of these contracted services. And we also considered and contemplated and you funded the, uh, a new vehicle uh, technician uh, to help service some of this demand. Um, as you may recall, the arrangement we have in place more than covers those costs. In fact, that we make about 20 percent um, profit in the, on the arrangement and it's still very lucrative for the other communities. Um, the, this council on June 15th uh, uh, authorized me to enter into interlocal agreements with Old Richard Beach and Westbrook. And we did so with Westbrook almost immediately thereafter, excuse me, with Old Orchard Beach. Uh, Westbrook, for a number of reasons, hasn't been able to sign their part of the deal. And so uh, we have continued to work with the existing staff and held off hiring any new staff until we had uh, additional services. And we were uh, approached by the town of Hollis. They heard how uh, successful the arrangement with Old Orchard was and uh, would like us to provide the same services. So what's before you is exactly the same interlocal agreement uh, that is in place with Old Orchard. And I should mention that now the town of Standish has expressed interest. Um, <laughs> we're a little bit, we'll evaluate carefully what our capacity is. We don't want to overcommit for sure. Very good. Uh, members of the public wishing to address this issue, please approach the podium. Is the motion? Move approval. Second. Second. Discussion. Peter? Thank you, Chris. Yeah, through the chair to Tom. Tom, mm -hmm. in, in reading it, it, it sounded like when we added the new technician to take care of the servicing that the volume for Westbrook was going to more than pay for it. Did I read correctly, though, that we're not sure the volume for Hollis will completely cover the, the cost of a full time, or will it cover? I believe it will. Can the combined will workload cover. will. As I said, we've held off, so we've actually yeah. booked revenue um, for four months without any uh, expense. So this year we're to the good for sure. But I believe combined, uh, we've evaluated their fleet, their inventory as part of this. Uh, we would never enter an agreement unless we had a great deal of assurance what we're buying into. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm very comfortable uh, and confident that we'll cover these costs. Okay. And but that was just unclear to me in sort of the, the write-up, whether it, it more than covered or covered. So that, yeah. Thank you. That's and I should mention there was a resident that inquired about whether this is something the town should be involved with. And first and foremost, we were approached. And we were approached because of our uh, 
uh, I guess, our technical expertise and the fact that these services are fairly specialized, particularly for fire vehicles. Yeah. Uh, the engine work and mechanical work is a dime a dozen, if you will, but the pump work, uh, we have invested heavily in uniquely qualified technicians that have this special skill. And for these other departments, particularly the smaller ones, they're sending them hundreds of miles away for servicing. So the downtime, the extra cost, um, and in, in, the, uh, in the sense of regional uh, cooperation, intermunicipal cooperation, it just made perfect sense. I should mention also um, these folks are not um, working full-time for these other communities. Um, there's a side benefit for the town that when they're not working on these vehicles, they're available to us. And uh, this will help uh, reduce any of those additional demands that stretch us fairly thin certain times of the year by having an extra body around. Chris. Um, if I recall during our budget discussions, also one of the questions was, is, uh, are you know, our vehicles or our requirements going to be uh, superseded by uh, a contract with another department? Can you clarify that position again, Tom, with this? Because my understanding was is with, the, with the Old Orchard and Westbrook agreements, you know, we have uh, an obligation. However, uh, there isn't a, a necessarily a prioritization other than our work, if our work comes in, uh, that's the important thing. That'll get done first uh, before we're not well, going to push our work out to accommodate them, basically. Sure. The, uh, I suspect we'll, we will have a technician assigned to these two towns, and so um, that, that's yes. part of the administration of it. But there's two different components. One is the typical uh, predicted uh, preventive maintenance program, so that can be scheduled, and we'll schedule that to suit all of our needs, theirs and ours. Uh, there could be occasion when a frontline piece of fire apparatus goes down that is kind of an emergency situation where that will take priority and we'll find a way to sort through those, those challenges. But we have technicians that can, uh, can work across the entire fleet so, so we can push and pull folks where the, where the demand is. And the, the real unpredictability is during winter operations when you have plows that go down or, you know, a, a fire apparatus uh, doesn't happen quite as frequently. Thank you. Jean Marie. Uh, I can't emphasize enough that um, the Maine Municipal Association is really encouraging towns to do these sort of uh, sharing uh, of resources for, I mean, it's cost effective. Uh, it makes sense. It saves money in the long run for property taxpayers, not only for us, but for uh, the other communities. So I, I like seeing these types of uh, agreements personally. Other comments? See none. Ready to vote. All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> Order 1674. Act on the request from Maine Farmland Trust to the Town Council to amend the agricultural easement approved on September 1, 2010 on the property known as the Firth Farm located on Ashwam <coughs> Road to allow new infrastructure to support the farm operation. We'll ask the town manager to introduce this matter. Yes, back in September 2010, the town, uh, in conjunction with Maine Farmland uh, Trust, uh, acquired an agricultural easement on what was then called the Fancy Farm, but it's now the Firth Farm. Uh, essentially, we bought the development rights for that property, um, and in rough numbers, uh, we get the value of conservation for half the price, and in this case, um, equally important, Daniel Mays, who's the uh, owner and farmer, um, is able to actually run a successful farm operation uh, at that location. So it's really has emerged as a really important tool for conservation. Uh, and in this case, there's some secondary benefits. At any rate, um, the town is a uh, backup holder, if you will, of that agricultural easement. Uh, the trust is the primary holder and uh, runs all kind of the, uh, the annual monitoring reports to make sure everything's being complied with. Um, the, as part of the whole property is covered by the easement, although there's a little carve out that is the farmstead property and allows Mr. Mm -hmm. Mays to do certain other things. He, he owns this property, he can use and operate within that farmstead area uh, with less restriction, I'll say. Um, most recently, and Daniel can speak to it better if you wish to hear, I believe he's looking to put an additional structure, a, a chicken barn or coop of some sort, um, and would like to put it outside the existing bounds of that farmstead area. And so um, we're, we've been asked, and the trust is certainly in agreement, to modify the easement to allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. 
Thank you. Uh, public comment. Anyone wishing to address this issue? Approach the podium. Motion. Move approval. Second. Discussion. Chris. Uh, I had the opportunity to visit the Firth Farm twice uh, this summer in my travels. Um, and um, I see no reason to not support this. It's a well-managed farm. Uh, it's productive. It's a great conservation uh, partnership. And uh, anything I think we can do to, to further encourage that is, is more than welcome. Other comments? Uh, Jean Marie. Um, I happen to know that Firth Farm eggs are really good because when I go to the market <laughs> here and get them all the time. But anyway, that being said, um, you know, I, I think that Scarborough, we're doing a really good job as a town for making sure that we're trying to maintain our agricultural background uh, and heritage. Uh, I, it is a, there's definitely a movement afoot um, to encourage more local uh, produce and, and, and farm goods and meats and eggs and whatever. So anything we can do to support that, and I, I don't have a problem. I think, I think it's fine. If he wants to build a chicken coop that the raccoons and whomever can't get into, that's a good thing. Good will. So I, I, <coughs> I think uh, the recommendation of the Maine Farmland Trust carries some weight. Um, I also think it's a pretty modest uh, request for us to support local farming, and I echo the Jean Marie sentiments. Thank you. Other comments? Um, I echo your comment. It's a modest change uh, for a uh, for a, uh, an agreement that provides real benefit to the community. Mm -hmm. Ready to vote? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Order number 1675, act on the request to certify the results of the municipal elections that were held on Tuesday, November 8, 2016. I'll ask the town clerk to If I could make this. a few comments just prior to Thank reading you. the results. Um, <coughs> there were some articles in the newspaper last week with regards to uh, the town having a recount or we had lost 2,700 ballots and that was not the case in either instance. What had happened was we ran uh, absentee ballots on Monday. The thumb drives from that day had not been run Tuesday. So we followed the steps that the uh, Secretary of State authorized us to do on Wednesday when we realized that, or I had realized that that had happened. So at 2.30 on Wednesday afternoon after the Secretary of State had, noti had notified all the parties, um, we were authorized to open the containers that held the tally sheets and the tally slips. And we proceeded to add those tallies in from Monday. So what I present tonight is uh, for certification is the um, results for the municipal election. Um, for town council, Marjorie DeSanctis with 4,048 votes, William Donovan 6,433 votes, Kathleen Foley with 6,735 votes, Annalie Rosenblatt with 3,842. The two uh, top were Will Bill Donovan and Kathleen Foley. For Board of Education, Carrie Lyford with 9,155 votes, Jody Shea with 9,780 votes. Uh, trustee for the Sanitary District, Aubrey Strauss with 9,524, and the write in, uh, Joseph Carroll with 87. And I uh, present that as for certification. Thank you. Uh, members of the public wishing to address uh, this matter, uh, please approach the podium. Motion, please. So Oops. moved. Second. Discussion. Chris. Uh, I just wanted to point out that none of the um, races, uh, the results changed as a result of those 2,700 uh, ballots. Uh, that's unfortunate for some people at this table, <laughs> but um, nonetheless, uh, I did uh, uh, watch the results. I thought it was handled very professionally. Uh, it was under the uh, supervision of the Secretary of State, for sure. Um, so I, I commend the uh, uh, staff for recognizing it, finding it, and reacting to it as quickly as they did. Good. Good morning. Uh, having formerly been the assistant uh, election warden for this town before I decided to run for office myself. Uh, I know the, uh, the amount of work uh, that goes into running elections, particularly in a presidential year, um, and people need to remember that we were not allowed to run absentees for the last one or two elections. So being able to run absentees prior to, again, is a new step. 
Um, I felt it was handled extremely professionally. I was extremely disappointed to find out the reactions of some folks, but it is what it is. And uh, I, I can't begin to thank uh, Tody and her crew for the hard work that they do. So. Second that. Other comments? Uh, John. Yep. Um, so I want to reiterate um, specifically, uh, Tody, I hope you know that you have the confidence, at least I believe the entire town council, I think you handle yourself extremely professionally. Um, as well as the manager in responding to what could be viewed as a critical situation. Um, you, I've lived through five elections with you personally um, over um, really 17 years and things have been worse in the past. And I can just <laughs> say is that every time, and it's not you that's been worse, it's the political environment, you have always been professional. Your staff is absolutely wonderful. The volunteers are um, incredible for what they do and what they give. And so I hope that you know that uh, um, while some people might try to be negative, uh, you never lost my confidence in what you do, and I really appreciate everything, as well as to Tom, because it's critical on how it was perceived, and I think that you gave some very good comments to the public um, and really calmed that down, and you guys reacted very quickly and very positively. If I could just say, um, we were so fixated on getting clear direction with the Secretary of State and yeah. then getting about the business of, of getting it right, I was somewhat neglectful, and I apologize in hindsight, uh, particularly for those candidates that were on that one or more of those ballots. Um, that certainly should have been something that uh, I thought of in terms of making aware that this was underway, uh, and to the members of the town council that we had an issue that we were working through. So in hindsight, I would have done it differently, but I assure you we were solely fixated on mm. getting about the business of getting it right. Yep. Uh, other comments? All in favor? Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> non action items, none at this time. Standing and special committee reports and liaison reports. Uh, Chris. Uh, energy has not met since the last time we did. Um, school board met on November 3rd. Uh, they revised the 2016 17 school calendar um, and basically fixed the uh, last day of school, which is subject to change because we haven't hit the winter yet, but uh, they've at least, uh, in theory, got it locked down. Um, went through some other co-curricular appointments and things like that. Uh, they're meeting again tomorrow uh, to um, uh, elect their chair and, and vice chair and go over a, a workshop with the NEASC update, which is their accreditation update, as well as a book report that they are supposed to comment on. So um, I'll inform the council as, as necessary based on that. Thank you. Peter. Yeah, a couple things to report. Um, the senior group, senior advisory committee, program advisory board met on November 14th. A couple things. They did have a table at the election, and they, there ended up be 12 new in, seniors that came by and got some information, expressed an interest, which is good as they're trying to expand their, their membership. Two, they're... they're we're on track. They're going to actually have Martins Point, as I mentioned last time, has provided sort of a community room for the town to use for different things. Um, the senior is going to have their first events there in February. Bingo is going to be there, moving there on the uh, February 13th. And their first senior luncheon will be there on Wednesday, 2.15. So we're moving forward with that and out of the generosity of Martins Point. So thank you. Um, Kind of an update on closing the gap, which is really about talking about the Eastern Trail. There's some really good developments, some things that are now on the town website. There is a drone video that was just released, which really brings some clarity to where the trail's going, and it really shows visually what it's going to look like and the kind of the territory that it goes off <coughs> over. Um, there is also up now a GoFundMe page, and it's GoFundMe.com at uh, ET closed the gap. Um, that's also, I think Tom put it on the town website, mm -hmm. so there's a link to it. So if people want to go out and if you want to support the trail, it's an easy way to give some contributions to do that. Um, both the, the, the Coastal the Harbor and the Shellfish Commission met on the 8th. A um, couple things that, that did come up. There's, um, there is an ad hoc meeting now or group meeting to talk about the co-op and parking and uses down there. They've met twice now. They're progressing in conversations, which is good. Um, 
There was a real scare on the Klan Flats, especially down East Main, of a new sort of version of red tie, which was mm. really causing some, mm. some illnesses in people and actually some fatalities. That has been cleared up, but it was mm. a real concern for a while. And we had a healthy conversation, a spirited conversation about the health of the Klan Flats here and conversation about licenses. And we've kind of, they're kind of holding off to get some new information just about what has been happening to the production off the camp clam flats in the last couple of years. And in particular, we just don't have the results from last summer. So we're still kind of on hold for that. And I think with that, that kind of sums up. Thank you. Thing, Go to St. Clair. Um, the only thing I have is I haven't had any meeting, I no meeting since last time, but the ad hoc um, committee for the public safety building is going to be meeting on the 30th mm -hmm. for our very first meeting at 6:30, and those are going to be held at the public safety building. Um, so our first meeting is on the 30th, and um, so obviously we haven't had it yet. We don't have any information yet, but um, it's exciting. The letters went out to congratulate everybody who um, was appointed to that, so everyone knows now, uh, and so we're excited to get started. Great, thank you. Marie. Uh, yeah, the Conservation Commission, we met um, Monday night. Uh, they are doing a very interesting project looking at sea level rise uh, here in Scarborough, um, but interviewing various town departments as to, um, you know, how reactive we are versus proactive and looking at, you know, what's going on. Of course, this week you had the King Tide. Uh, which makes for some interesting uh, situations, and in particularly the Pine Point area. So it's been very interesting uh, working uh, with the Conservation Commission along those lines. But that's a big project, and they will be reporting back to the council um, on this. So that's it for me. For Thank you, Will. Uh, the Affordable Housing, uh, Housing Alliance met on Thursday. Um, we were finalizing um, the requirements um, to be given to the to the planning board um, for a developer meeting their obligation for affordable housing mm -hmm. um, on a project, um, and that was uh, really for for two projects that are currently in motion. Uh, we we're also joined by um, a lawyer for uh, Mr. Chamberlain, who's developing the Dunston Crossing property. Um, he was presenting the plan for um, uh, how they intended to. Um, to meet the the requirement there, um, there was some consternation on the on the commission about how this has developed over <coughs> time and it doesn't really meet the letter of of the initial um, I guess agreement um, of the plan. Uh, but there uh, there appears to have been some relief from the planning board over time, um, and so they're still um, awaiting I think final um, final input from the housing lines. Um, there were also a healthy discussion around. Um, some ideas for the uh, comprehensive plan of state. Mm. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Beva. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of uh, items. I'm going to pass around some materials uh, to support uh, the report. First is uh, to report on the, um, the library. They have their um, board meeting tomorrow, but this is a nice quick overview about their progress with the Little Free Library Initiative. And um, to generalize and to kind of um, bring that all together, it's been a huge success since its uh, initiation. There are now 15 different little free libraries across Scarborough. Um, you know, just some of those are Ashland Drive, Route 77, Eastern Trail, Scarborough Grounds, Memorial Park, um, so forth, so on, and, you know, really um, get a chance to go and at least look at it. Um, I look at this project as you do want to visit it, kind of like uh, um, visiting all the restaurants on diners, divers, and drives, and if you can uh, check them all off, this should almost be like a bingo game because uh, <laughs> the, each each library is a little bit different design. So I think it's really exciting. Um, and just in uh, relative terms, um, I actually serve on the Rotary Club for another community where I work, and um, communities are different. I can't get their library to support. Oh, yeah. a little free library because it's more of a challenge even though we're such a great um, example I think it's a great example that Emily Reed and the entire library board has done so I want to congratulate them on their success for that I also want to mention that um, their new strategic plan for the new uh, cycle um, is available for your review um, as well as input so if you can go, if you want to go to their website it is available on that website and I know that Nancy and Emily would I'd uh, love to hear your input as well as myself, and I can communicate that back. So uh, thank you. 
Um, next, I wanted to also hand out recently Ecomain. I serve as a liaison with Mike Shaw to Ecomain, and I really wanted to, I wanted to share their annual report with you because um, we are a significant owner partner um, in this um, uh, relationship, and I think it's important that you understand because it has gone. Um, over time in, in different cycles and the importance of our relationship. So it's a true success story about uh, where they have been to where they are now and also where they're going. So um, that is for you to kind of uh, peruse as well. Um, and uh, next is, um, it's not official because uh, it's really in a different capacity. I also serve on the um, Cumberland County Budget Advisory Committee, um, served co-chair uh, this year and wanted to at least advise you that we have completed our work for the county commissioners. Um, our recommendation to the commissioners is to approve a budget of 5.99% tax increase across the board. Um, um, the manager just, I just saw him uh, 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 twitch a little bit and it is pretty significant, um, but we also face the challenge that um, we recognize that there is a significant loss of state revenue that is being projected um, mm. in that. Uh, it's about a million dollars to a million two, so it's significant. I will mention, because it's important to us from a planning perspective, is that one of our uh, fiscal notes uh, was that we are actually recommending that the county change its fiscal year from a calendar year, I'm um, sorry, from a fiscal year being July to a calendar year, if I got that correctly. The other way around. Uh, the other way around. Um, the importance of it is that the next budget cycle will actually be an 18 month, 18, 18 month budget which means that there will be a, um, an automatic increase as a result of that. Um, so um, I'll keep you informed about that because it's very important um, <coughs> that you understand the impact of that. Um, and last but not least, I did want to mention I'm also a member of the Legislative Policy Committee for Maine Municipal Association and we're meeting tomorrow. Um, we're hopefully finalizing our initiatives and um, priorities for um, MMA. Um, I'm, I actually serve now with um, our assistant manager to represent the town. And it's pretty significant given the, uh, the results of this <coughs> election as well as um, some of the, particularly the referendum questions and the impact on the budgeting. So um, I will report out to you later what those initiatives are, um, not just in the finance area, but also the other policy, as well as I know that Larissa will do the same. So mm -hmm. that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, I didn't have any uh, committee meetings, but I met with the school finance director to educate myself on the uh, new teacher contract. Uh, I think it's important for people to understand uh, uh, there's a good handout that is on their website uh, and is very informative of, of how they perceived their responsibility. Uh, I also uh, read the library's new strategic plan that Sean referenced, and that's an important document. Uh, I think the library is going to play a greater role for the community in the future. Uh, uh, and can be quite a valuable asset. Um, Town Manager's report. Yes, uh, very quickly. Uh, last evening, my staff hosted a uh, neighborhood meeting at, in Five <coughs> Point down at the firehouse. This was to begin the process um, regarding a master plan of, of the Pine Point area. We have long known that uh, East Grand Avenue itself needs a lot of attention. Uh, there's uh, longstanding drainage issues, uh, crumbling infrastructure and the like. But at the same time, we wanted to make sure we're looking at it comprehensively. And so last night was the first of this, uh, this effort. Uh, I'm, I was advised that between 40 and 50 people were there. I think perhaps Councillor Hayes was there for at least a bit anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, and the report from my staff was that from their perspective, it was kind of a resounding success in that great participation. Uh, they had two hours of really good dialogue and comment, a lot of input, and w having some experience working in Beach communities generally, uh, Pine Point um, in particular, I guess, uh, we're sensitive to the fact that we need to do a lot of outreach, not just early, but uh, often throughout the whole process. So we've built that into our schedule and we'll certainly uh, live up to that, uh, that standard. Um, the council will sort itself out over the next couple of weeks and two weeks <laughs> from now you'll reorganize yourself. But uh, unlike many years, uh, things slow down this time of year. We try to slow things down. There's a number of things that that are bubbling and will be bubbling to the surface, mm -hmm. uh, not the least of which are kind of the growth management ordinance and growth permits. We, it seems like a consistent item on your agenda is multifamily housing and kind of the impacts. Um, that's a real rich topic that I'd love to engage the council in. There's a lot of history, there's a lot of detail associated. So uh, that would be a great topic that we probably should deal with sooner than later. 
Um, recreational marijuana, it looks like we bought a little time, but um, there's uh, issues abound uh, around that issue. Uh, kicking off the comprehensive plan is right around the corner, and we'll be finalizing our facility plan, and we're doing a campus master plan, uh, kind of coincident with that. Uh, not to mention goal setting, uh, and perhaps team building, if the council chooses to, and a meeting with your legislative delegation is probably something mm -hmm. order within the next few months. And similarly, ordinance committee, there's four or five things that I've kind of lined up that I'd love to bring to the committee mm -hmm. and have them prioritize, um, perhaps fireworks being one of them. So there's a lot of work to be done. I, I'm anxious mm -hmm. to get reorganized and get moving. Um, just a reminder, holiday schedule, we're closed Thursday, Friday, next week. Um, I hope you're all enjoying yourselves with your families. And I just want to take a minute to appreciate um, Jean Marie's time on council. Uh, I really enjoyed working with Jean Marie. Uh, she's one of the hardest workers I've ever had the occasion to, to work with. And I've always appreciated kind of your, your positive disposition. You kind of approach everything. Um, and uh, I certainly hope you don't go too far. There's committee work, uh, all sorts of committee work that mm. we'll be happy to put you to work at. And also to, to thank uh, Councilor Donovan, Chairman Donovan. Um, Bill has been tireless, for those of you that don't know. Um, you know, Bill is in my office uh, or calling me certainly every day, multiple <laughs> times a day, and, and not to be nagging. These are substantive issues, and uh, I often feel like he's a member of staff on, on a number of things. So he's been, really been a tireless advocate for, um, on behalf of the residents and really been a great resource to staff mm -hmm. at the same time. So, Bill, I thank you. Thank you. That's it. Council of Comments. Uh, Chris, we'll start with you. So I uh, did want to start off by also echoing uh, my thoughts on Councillor Katarina. It's been a, a, a joy to serve with you for the past year. Um, both being Italian, we, we tend to have very heated discussions, which mm. I'm going to sorely miss. Um, but I'm sure I won't miss them that long because my phone will be ringing as usual first thing <laughs> in the morning. So I uh, wish you the best um, thank you. and uh, thank you for, for all your support and guidance my first year on the Council. I very much appreciate that. And, um, I wish you the best, and I won't say goodbye. I'll say ciao for now, because uh, we're not going anywhere. So, um, second thing I wanted to mention is um, there's a, a, a free community Thanksgiving dinner uh, that the school department and the town are cooperating on. Um, I, I, there's been a little bit of, I guess, a misunderstanding maybe out in the community. This is not a um, uh, uh, welfare type or, or a free meal for hom homeless or something like that. It literally is just a community meal. Uh, if you find yourself in town uh, and you're single or your family is traveling or you bring your family in, it's, uh, it's going to be at the uh, Wentworth School uh, from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Um, there is no cost <coughs> to attend, but you are asked to please RSVP and let them know. Um, the school and the town are not necessarily picking up the tab for this, although I believe we are donating some transportation. That's our contribution. Uh, yeah, and the school department, I believe, is donating the facilities. Um, however, the um, Peter Esposito, who is the uh, food service manager, uh, I don't know if, you, if any of, for those who don't know, the Espositos are very well known in the greater Portland area, fellow Italian, of course, um, for their <laughs> restaurant skills. Uh, and Peter is an absolutely amazing cook. Uh, his family is donating their time uh, mm -hmm. to prepare the meals. Uh, there have been um, uh, a, a very uh, um, well-received outreach from the community through Project Grace for both monetary and uh, volunteering support. So it's really just an opportunity to get together uh, and share a meal together. It, there aren't income requirements. Um, if you find yourself in town and uh, you want to stop by the you know, Wentworth from 11 to 1, just the only thing they ask is please RSVP ahead of time so they know how much food to prepare and, and who's going to be there. Um, last but not least, I don't want to, uh, uh, well, let me, let me take a step back. Uh, first of all, uh, we, we, we passed a very uh, tumultuous or, or crazy, I guess you should say tumultuous, but a very crazy election cycle. Um, congratulations to Katie, uh, Katie Foley, and, and all those who were successful uh, in, in, the, uh, in their races. Um, it's, uh, it takes a lot to, to throw yourself out there, and, and as we all know who've done it before, certainly from behind this table, it can be a grind. Um, but I did want to mention a few things that really kind of disturbed me a little bit through this cycle. Um, as an individual candidate, um, I expect uh, to receive criticism. 
Uh, I certainly, um, you know, would prefer it not to be negative. I'd prefer to talk about the records, but um, I will thank uh, Representative Siraki. She did not do any uh, negative uh, attacks per se. Um, it was, a, uh, but one of the few things I did find disturbing was um, one of the major parties in town did, I feel, uh, attack the integrity of the council and school board. Um, I, I personally, as a, as a, a representative of Scarborough, um, am very proud of the fact that we're nonpartisan at the local level. Mm -hmm. I think it's critical uh, to our ability to solve problems and address issues fairly and, and uh, respectfully that we don't put letters after our names. Um, I think that coupled with um, as well some actions by uh, some of us here on the council that, that openly supported a few candidates, I think that's a very dangerous position. Uh, it's not in, it's, it's, uh, as an individual, it's a tough call. Um, you know, I think we all have the right to support and say who we want as individuals, but uh, as soon as we start invoking our, our position from behind this table, I think we, we're on a very slippery slope. Uh, and it's not one particular individual that happened on a couple of occasions. So uh, I would just kind of uh, caution the, the group, uh, I call it my Eisenhower speech. <laughs> yeah, if you realize <laughs> in 1960, uh, Dwight Eisenhower said, beware of the... Uh, the uh, political uh, military machinery complex and the power behind it. Um, if we choose to open ourselves up to partisan elections, um, that's an option. We, other communities do it. Uh, I just really worry that uh, that, would, that would put us in a position as a town uh, to be a little bit more divisive. And quite frankly, I don't, I don't think we need that. So uh, I'm hoping that we all uh, you know, take a step back, we take a breath. Um, the results are in, they're finished, they're finalized. We've all voted on them, we've accepted them. Uh, now let's put it all behind us and move forward and, and, and get on with the business of, of managing the town. Thank you. Peter? Yeah, I mean, I think it kind of piggyback on, on, you know, a lot of what <laughs> Councilor knows, but certainly thank Jean Marie for her service and the years that she spent here and her passion that she brought. And, you know, to, to Council Donovan, thank you for your leadership this past year. I mean, it, this is the second year for me on the council, but it was a big difference between the first year mm -hmm. here and, and this year. We've made progress, which is all good, so thank you for that. Um, and then I'd, I'd kind of, you know, just kind of piggyback on a little bit about the national election and just, you know, what I'm really concerned about, just is our, our lack as a, a community, as a state, as a nation, to have civil, respectful conversations. Certainly the level of discourse we saw mm -hmm. was really concerning. So what I hope is all of us take ownership and say, not again. And I really look to, and, and again, I mentioned the dialogue in this town has changed. It certainly, I observed it last year around some of the tough issues getting better. There's, there's a group in town, the Scarborough Kindness Project, that's really trying to do some things. To, to help all of us to have a respectful exchange of ideas and values and those types of things. What was mentioned earlier tonight, that there's going to be someone coming to town to kind of help with that dialogue. I just encourage all of us, let's, let's have Scarborough not be like every place else and bring that here and find ways that we can act respectfully and civilly to each other. So thank you. Thank you. Kate. Oh, good. Thank you. Hey, Marie. Well, <laughs> I'm going to start by uh, saying thank you to all of my fellow counselors. I've certainly enjoyed my time working with all of you. And for you guys who are willing to talk to me at 7.30 in the morning, uh, when I've got a question or something that comes up. Uh, also to Todi and Tom, um, I know I've worked with other communities in various capacities. Um, and uh, we run a top-notch show here in Scarborough. And uh, without uh, you guys running the front office, so to speak, I know what can happen, having seen it happen in, in other places. Um, I would like to thank the people of Scarborough uh, for allowing me to serve for the past three years. Uh, I hope that you think I have done a credible job on your behalf during my tenure on this council. While we may not have always agreed on matters that were hotly contested during my tenure, I am pretty sure that you will agree that um, you always, always knew where I stood on matters. Uh, I'm not one that waits to see which way the wind blows, and I certainly am not a good poker player. Uh, and they've never been my strong suit, so I, I, I will own up to that. Uh, while I was hoping to uh, continue my service to you in Augusta, through fighting to prevent the continued shift in taxation policy towards lower, flatter, and inherently unfair income tax uh, movement, 
that causes a spike in property taxes, and obviously there is a trend away from increasing financial support for quality public education, which I don't think is correct. And also, I, I really truly disagree with the thinking that uh, increasing property tax exemptions are going to come anywhere near uh, providing meaningful tax relief to struggling seniors. You need to understand that I'm not going away. Um, I still live at 311 Gorham Road. I will still use my speed dial and my personal connections to fight for what I think is right. I will continue to advocate for all of you as my neighbors and my friends in Scarborough. And again, I thank all of you for the opportunity to serve. I hope everyone stays in touch. I'm just an email or a phone call away. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, so <coughs> not to sound redundant, but <laughs> Dean Marie, thank you on a job well done. I um, really appreciate your service and thank you. your friendship, and uh, I appreciate you not going away. <laughs> um, and Bill, I appreciate the, the time that you put in on, as chair. I really think that you've also done a wonderful job, and I'm appreciative of it. Um, <coughs> uh, speaking of more statewide elections, um, the um, uh, qu question one about uh, legalizing uh, <laughs> recreational marijuana, I hope that we're going to consider some kind of yeah moratorium while we sort out the ordinance. Um, I know that that was, that was mentioned uh, a couple weeks back, but um, it seems like that's a pretty serious thing that we'll, we're going to want to get <coughs> right and um, mm -hmm. uh, not have something happen by default. Um, question two, also very close, uh, but also passed. Um, it's something that I struggled with personally because um, I agree that there's been a shift um, to the local property taxpayer on, um, for education funding. Um, so what I'm hoping is that now Augusta has heard pretty clearly that um, the state, the uh, taxpayers in the state would like the legislature to fund education at 55%. Um, so my expectation is that this coming spring, we're gonna, in <laughs> April, we're going to see 55% uh, funding uh, coming to Scarborough, and I'm certain that I will not be disappointed. Um, <laughs> you know who to call if you are. <laughs> I said you know who to call if you are. Yeah. Just call me. I'll yeah. call my connection. <laughs> uh, but uh, in all seriousness, I, th I really think that that's an issue, and that I hope that uh, that uh, I'm not the only one who will be um, uh, expressing that sentiment to our legislative represent representation. Um, and uh, I also wanted to thank um, Katie and Peter for for mentioning the civility workshop. Uh, once again, it is uh, Tuesday, uh, November 29th at uh, 7 o'clock at Wentworth, um, and I'm going to read the event, uh, and then I'll stop. <laughs> uh, so please join the Scarborough Kindness Project and several, several local dignitaries uh, as we welcome Terry Hayes to Scarborough. Terry is a former state legislature, the current Maine State Treasurer, and she is a skilled and knowledgeable practitioner of and advocate for civil discourse. Terry will be with us a short, excuse me, showing us a short temporary, temporary, I have no idea what that means, uh, showing <laughs> us a short video uh, introducing concepts related to civility and facilitating both self-discovery exercises and group discussion slash problem solving. To encourage rich and productive dialogue, Terry will have participants sit with people they don't already know. She and participants will not be talking about issues specific to Scarborough community dynamics, um, this is not the place to air grievances, but to connect with neighbors, identify common ground, and learn techniques for communicating both effectively and respectfully. Um, Terry has promised civility pins to participants, uh, <laughs> and Drew Serbin, chair of the Republican Town Committee, has signed on as a snack sponsor. Uh, we have other sponsorship opportunities available, so message uh, me, and I believe that means Aaron, uh, but I think anyone on the Kindness Project, um, for details about the sponsorship opportunities. Thank you, Will. No, I am done. Thank you. <laughs> John. So a uh, couple, I've got a few things here. So uh, first, um, to uh, piggyback what um, Councillor Chiazzo's comments regarding the influence of local party, um, political parties with local issues and local candidates, um, I totally agree with him. This is the second year in a row in which one particular party has focused more on the negative of those who are running against others rather than supporting the strength of their own candidates. And I think that 
while we can focus on civil discourse and how to be better um, stewards, um, you have to at some point call that out. Because the fact <coughs> is that the reference that he's making, which um, talked about uh, decisions made by um, counselors, is actually factually incorrect. Um, and the data proves it, and I'll be happy to show anybody that data, because I've kept it since 1997. Um, so I'll leave it with that. Uh, the second piece is about the elections. Um, <coughs> Wow, what a night, huh? Um, i got to <laughs> tell you, I went to bed early because I couldn't handle it. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. Uh, so I woke up uh, with the same information everybody else did. And while um, that, um, our new president is not my cup of tea, I think that in um, the sense of um, community, we do all want him to be successful because it's extremely important to the country as a whole. And um, I do wish him luck. Um, I might have different... Um, goals than he does, but I do hope that he is successful because we can't go down the path that it appears we've, uh, we're going down as part of the campaigning. Um, locally, I've already um, mentioned, Todi, I think you did a great job again. Um, it's absolutely awesome to see what we do here. Um, it's really exciting. Um, I do want to thank the citizens of Scarborough that came out and voted because if you actually look at the details of the voter mm -hmm. outcome for just local, it does tell us a story about who we are, um, some of our decisions, um, both at um, whether, it's the, whether it's the presidential race or the state races or local referendums, it does give us some sense of who we are as a community and as a kind of a uh, political geek and looking at those numbers, um, it does help me in understanding some of the issues that were faced. Um, what I did want to mention is um, Continuing with the election, first is to um, Jean Marie. I'm not going to say goodbye because I know you're coming back. So, uh, in some capacity, you will be back. And I just want to say thank you. I think that uh, the uh, the one thing I've recognized over the last two years that I've been back um, is that you are are a woman and a leader of integrity and character. And I think that you have represented Scarborough extremely well, and we all appreciate that um, very, very much. Um, to Councilor Chiazzo, um, you know, um, th you are a, a tough cookie in the sense that, um, you know, um, you're not in my district, so I couldn't vote for you, although I, I, wanted, you to, I wanted you to win. Um, but I want you to know that there is still a silver lining. First of all, I've got to mention is that you and I share a unique uh, kind of a, a, a unique experience. We both served on the school board. We both have been on the town council, and, and we both have lost a house race and with, while we were serving on the town council, so we have that experience. But the way I looked at it and the advice I had gotten from councilors back when I ran in 2006 was that the citizens of Scarborough decided that they wanted to keep you closer to home to protect, <laughs> to protect them and advocate for them on behalf of the town. So I think you're going to continue being an excellent counselor, and I'm really glad that you're still here with us. So um, I appreciate that. Um, to uh, um, Councilor-elect Katie Foley, or I hope you don't mind calling me Katie. I don't think you really go by Catherine um, or Kathleen. Um, I think it's awesome. I served with your sister, so I served with a Foley Ferguson. I'm now serving with a Foley. Who knows? I might be here long enough to serve with <laughs> Mackenzie Ferguson, um, which is her niece. So who knows? But um, welcome aboard. You're going to love it. Um, as long as you keep, uh, no matter what side of the um, issue, as long as you keep the people in mind, um, you're, you're going to really enjoy doing the work because it is fun. Um, but it's gonna, there's going to be a quick reality. You're going to have one-third of this community that's not going to like your decisions no matter mm -hmm. what they said during a campaign. There's going to be a third that absolutely agree with you, and then there's a half that will sit there and falter back and forth. That's kind of that, that VEX diagram. I saw you do the VEX diagram. There's that half that sits there, and they overlap, and they're going to go back and forth. Um, so um, welcome aboard. I'm really excited about working with you. Um, and congratulations. Um, Bill, I am extremely happy that you won re-election. You have been an incredible leader that has really redefined, um, if not defined, what the role of chair has been for the past year. And I think our success in this past year um, has really been headstrong starting with your position and your work. Um, I appreciate that. Um, I hope that with the manager's comments regarding goal setting is that we also take an opportunity to look back because one important part of goal setting is looking back at your previous goals and determining did we meet our expectations, um, do we agree with the measurements and what were the outcomes so that we can build on that because I've been through many town councils and we've never looked back and said were we successful, do we all agree with where we've been because it's a part of moving forward. So 
Um, I'm really excited about that process because I think that this year has been probably one of the most successful in my mm -hmm. experience of being on the council and that goes back to 2000. So I really appreciate the fact that you're staying with us. Um, sorry, there were a couple other things I wanted to mention. I did want to also, sorry, um, I did want to also thank all the candidates for running, running uh, whether they won or lost. Um, and that's because uh, this year for the council race, it was my first experience in which every candidate, I had actually worked with every candidate that was running for town council. Um, and so I understood um, the strengths of all of them and they would have all served very well on this council. So I really want to say thank you for them to coming forward because it's a very important part. Um, and it is a huge commitment, not by only the candidate, um, but it's also by the family mm -hmm. because they really do sacrifice in that. So I hope that um, as we enter into this uh, season of Thanksgiving, that we all thank everyone, including those who ran, those who've been successful, and those who haven't. And I did want to mention one thing. So we took a picture before uh, we uh, started the council meeting, because it's kind of a new tradition, I hope. So I actually was going through the archives, and of course citizens won't, but you'll get to see this. So in 2004, I found a picture in which we did the same thing. Um, Ms. Justice actually had dark hair. Um, I was 30 pounds heavier, um, but um, it's, it is something that we had started as a tradition that we kind of lost, and I'm really glad that we were able to bring that back. And um, if anybody would like to see it, I, I was surprised when I found it, and that's what made me think about asking about that we do it again. So uh, I might even turn a picture over to the town and its archives, but uh, just want to thank everybody for everything that we've been able to do over the past year. Thank you, Sean. Thank you for the kind words. Uh, the marijuana, marijuana moratorium, uh, town manager and I have discussed it on a number of occasions. We've closely monitored uh, the, uh, the timing of bringing forth a moratorium. Uh, we did not want to pull the trigger too quickly on it uh, because uh, there are time limits on uh, by law as to the length of a moratorium, six months, uh, and uh, as a consequence, uh, we expect the state's going to take the full nine months and that uh, with the recount that was uh, um, acknowledged today to mm -hmm. take place, uh, we really expect January 7th to be about the date of certification of this election. So uh, January will be a busy month for uh, all of us uh, and I expect that there will be uh, a moratorium. I myself uh, <clears throat> want to see uh, us be very protective of our community. Uh, I worry about the public road hazard where you can't measure uh, a period, a person's impairment. So that mm -hmm. concerns me greatly. Uh, uh, being in close proximity to underage, uh, uh, to children going to schools and uh, any access uh, that is uh, promoted uh, for underage children is something we have to work tremendously to protect uh, our kids again. So those will be a couple of things that I'm going to uh, focus on. Um, I want to uh, thank Scarborough for uh, re-electing me. Uh, I'm excited. The amount of work that we have in front of us is tremendous. Uh, I previously uh, 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 thanked Katie Foley or offered my uh, congratulations to her for, for uh, winning and I particularly enjoyed getting to meet um, uh, uh, Anna Lee Rosenblatt and Marge DeSanctis uh, had known either very well, uh, really enjoyed uh, the opportunity to get to know them and the contribution. I know that Marge is uh, anxious to continue to participate in, in municipal affairs. Um, the real uh, uh, winners of last week's election really was the town of Scarborough. Uh, the town of Scarborough uh, set records, mm. all-time records of uh, six votes short of 13,000 votes cast. Mm -hmm. uh, never anything close to that before. It was a 78% of registered voters. Again, a record uh, for Scarborough. So uh, it's online. It's interesting to look at because it does tell you something about our community. So uh, it's available and online. Uh, and lastly, uh, I want to thank uh, Jean Marie. Uh, she's been a great uh, advisor to me, my closest advisor, uh, and uh, I would talk with her frequently to get good counsel, uh, wisdom, knowledge, 
and it was a great pleasure serving with you these Thank past you. three years. And with that, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. <laughs> All in favor. Thank you. Yeah, that's the last.